that. Thank you very much point Lord Saw attack. No point I guess. That was pretty uncool of me. He wanted to keep it a secret. But he was found out by me. Saw attack smiled dryly. There was a knock on the door. The maid seems to have finished preparing the new dress. I'll wait here so please go and change. Yes. Thank you for your thoughtfulness Lord Soratek. Celestina followed the maid to the room at the back, in order to change her clothes. The dress prepared by the royal lady was a lovely baby blue and pink dress. Her hair was done up in a half up doe and small blue flowers were secured in her hair. She was dressed beautifully but Celestina was completely silent. If you don't like it then I can prepare another dress. Ah, no. I'm surprised that it's so pretty. Thank you for helping me prepare this. Your satisfaction is the most important. Well then please excuse us. After the maids bowed and left, Celestina let out a huge sigh. It's impossible op- And what's impossible? It was the dress prepared for Celestina. It's not that it isn't trendy or pretty it's not even like the size doesn't fit. In fact, since Soratek had it prepared, it was a top quality dress. Not only does it look good, but it was also very good quality, very nice to the touch. It was high quality silk. The material seems to wrap around her body snugly without a need for a corset. This is the dress that the heroine changes into. That right. This is the dress that the heroine changes into once the villainess spills wine on her in the game. There is no mistake, since I've played it several times. Back quote no way. Why am I, the villainess, wearing this dress? Besides, what exactly is the heroine changing into? I don't understand come to think of it, she must go to Sora Tech, since she had finished changing. Sora Tech might be bad mouthed. If he is completely absent from the evening party, re-entering the party after changing will garner her more attention. She really doesn't like it point, but she had no choice. Once I survive, I can visit the village once again point let's do our best for a little while more. Better yet, Sora Tech should escort Miria from here on. She was thinking about insane things. No, that was the actual case in the game. When she was thinking of various things, there was a knock on the door. Sora Tech entered the room. He must have heard from the maid that the preparations were complete. Are you okay, Sal? I'm sorry for the inconvenience Lord Sora Tech. I'm ready. Since I was the one that intentionally spilled the wine, I was certainly alright. In that case let's return. Let's show our faces for a bit and leave quickly. Thank you. Once Soratek and Celestina returned back to the banquet hall, they found that Miria was already there, after changing her clothes. The surroundings were buzzing but no one said anything about Celestina changing her clothes. In Miria's case, very few people would have noticed that she had changed her clothes. Lord Soratek, Lady Celestina. She was smiling and waving towards us. I'm glad that you're fine. She happily said. Back quote no, I was the one that did something I'm glad that nothing happened to you. It was my carelessness I'm really sorry. Please don't apologize, I'm perfectly fine. Thank you Lady Miria. Miria was a much better girl than Celestina imagined. Maybe because Soratek was here she was exceptionally nice, but she didn't want to think that the heroine of the game was a bad girl. The dress that she was wearing was different from the game. The dress that Miria was actually supposed to change into was currently on Celestina's body, so that much was obvious. Celestina thought that Miria may be wearing a better quality dress than hers, but that wasn't the case either. The dress is pink and bright, the lace is also treated, but it's a lower quality dress. Maybe a dress from a previous season. Back quote of course, it's cute though perhaps there is a condition to wear this dress. 
may be something like, the person that saw a tech escorts to the guest room, that would make sense. Miria was taken to the guest room during the game, but in this case, it was me. There was no way to tell, if that was the reason, but the probability was quite high. Backquote if not, this dress wouldn't come to me. Well, there's no point in thinking about it. More importantly, she had to now think about a way, to bring Miria and Soratek closer, in order to avoid the bad end. Miria mentioned that she wanted to dance with Soratek, but since Selesina was with Soratek then, it didn't really work out. First Selesina needed to dance with Soratek, so that Soratek could then dance with Miria without worrying about social obligations. Selesina liked Soratek's manners, but she wished that he would not bother with them so much, in order to avoid the bad end. Backquote it's alright, I'm prepared to be dumped. That's why don't hold back, and pursue the one you like. Lord Soratek. NN, what is it sell? I don't think that I should say such a thing though. HNN? Will you dance with me? Of course, in fact I should be asking you. There is no reason for you to think that you cannot say that. I'm really happy Cell. Soratek looked happy as about slightly and held out his hand to Celestina. Won't you dance with me, Cell? I'd be glad to, Lord Soratek. I had already requested it, but he asked me once again. Upon receiving the escort, Celestina took Soratek's hand. She unconsciously looked at Miria and found that her eyes were wide open and her expression was a little distorted. Backquote that's right, she would dislike it, since she wanted to dance with Soratek, but the villainous is dancing instead Celestina apologized to Miria in her mind and called out to her. Lady Miria, please excuse me for a little while. Our point yes. Of course Lady Celestina. Miria smiled and saw them off. Celestina and Soratek went to the center and started to dance. While dancing, Celestina looks up at Soratek. He seems really happy. Although he is usually smiling, it seemed sweeter right now she thought. Soratek was overjoyed to receive an invitation to dance from Celestina, so his poker face had collapsed. But back quote he must be happy, since he can dance with the heroine once this dance is over. Celestina thought that he was happy that he would be able to dance with Miria, and not really happy about dancing with her. It was a little sad that Soratek had feelings for Miria, but avoiding the bad end was the most important. If the two of them don't get together, then it not only Soratek and Miria, but Celestina would also die. Listening to the royal musicians play the melody, Celestina closed her eyes. Soratek is great at dancing, so he would guide her well, even if she had her eyes closed. Celestina also remembered the steps perfectly. Watching Celestina relax and leave her body to him, he smiled kindly. Sal, aren't you tired? Yes, I'm alright point it's just. I'm really worried. Since I spilled wine on Lady Miria's dress, she said she was fine, but maybe she's really bothered by it and feeling sad. That's why I'd like Lord Soratek to call out to her. Me. Yes. If the prince of the country calls out to her then she should relax. It's just that I'm really sorry that you have to make it up to her for me. Celestina tells him not to force himself if it's impossible. But Soratek immediately replied with, leave it to me. I'm Cell's K, so it's alright. Don't worry about it. I'll call out to her once our dance is over. Thank you, Lord Soratek. Backquote with this, Soratek can proudly dance with the heroine. Would Lady Cell be dancing right about now? Hisu was walking towards the desk facing the window as looked towards the royal castle that was visible from the window. He was in the room that was handed over to him in the mansion of Marquis Rinklet at the royal capital. 
The room was the size of six tatamis. It had a bed, a closet, and even a table. For Hisu who lived in a small hut with Toy, he felt like he was in a different world. She not only saved Toy, but she also saved him from that lifestyle. Hisu swore inside his heart to serve by Celestina's side forever. With Toy was sleeping on the rug that was laid out right next to the bed. He seemed to look happy. Hisu relaxed looking at him. We have a solid roof here, it's nice. He didn't have to worry about the house flying away due to strong rains and wind. Hisu was relieved about that, and started to think about Celestina's village. First we must construct a place for Lady Cell, so that she can stay there. They had requested the people of the village, and not specialized carpenters. They may gather the materials somehow but there was no way that it would turn into a place as grand as this mansion. It wouldn't be a place to live but to rest instead. For now, it was fine to stay in the house in the city of Harmel. It's closer to the village and Bethel would prefer that as well. Hisu made a list of all the people living in the village. The coordinator was the village chief Anton. The assistant and the one responsible for building the house was Gats. There were three men and two women, three little boys and four little girls. Right now there wasn't much in Turtown Exchange, but those opportunities would increase hereafter. It wouldn't be good enough to call it Lady Cell's Mansion Point though. Anyway, I've asked Gats, so he'll do something about it, he had requested for a small place for the moment. Once the village develops, it would be fine to remake the place. Celestina was to oversee the 7th district, but the hub for her living would be in the adjacent district in the city of Harmel. Next one must increase the number of fields. Especially since the village had no source of income at the moment. For now, they had planted potatoes, but they needed to plant various types of vegetation eventually. It would be good if they could make some specialty products, but that would probably take some time. But, for now, there was something that he had to do before that. That was upskilling himself. He must learn the proper way to talk a Celestina's apprentice butler first. If he doesn't learn quickly then he may end up bringing trouble to Celestina due to his lack of education. No. He had already left a terrible impression on Soratek. I would absolutely hate it if Lady Cell were to get in trouble because of me. He had to put more effort into studying. There is a library in this mansion and even in the house in Harmel. If I can get permission then I can read and learn more during my free time. That was all that he could do, for now, he thought. Let's confirm tomorrow's schedule first, and then get to reading. He heard the sound of a horse, and realized that Celestina was back. Welcome back Lady Cell. I'm home. Thank you for coming out to welcome me Hisu. No? Hisu lent his hand to Celestina who was alighting the carriage with a curious look. Lady Cell, aren't you with Lord Soratek? Backquote as expected. He's curious. Celestina smiled dryly at his words. Various things happened, and Lord Soratek is with a lady named Miria. A. Even though Celestina was his fiancé, it was written all over Hisu's face. Lord Soratek was dancing with Lady Miria when she turned flashily, and it turned into something weird. Lord Soratek had to accompany her. Is that so? Celestina was also surprised by that. Since she invited Soratek to dance, Celestina had assumed that the heroine was good at it point, but that wasn't the case at all. Her movements were awkward and even the way her feet were moving, there was no elegance at all. Backquote but, I guess that would make sense when Celestina first started the game in her previous world, her dance skill was pretty low. By participated in events her dance skills went up, and she was able to dance elegantly. If Miria's current level were assumed to be 1 then Celestina would be at the highest level. Whatever the case, 
Selesina who had received training from her childhood was at a completely different level compared to Miria who had been getting treated in the countryside. She was a Valenus, but she could feel knots in her stomach due to worrying about it while watching. She held back a sigh and smiled at Hitsu. I'll rest in my room for a bit. I don't need any tea either so please ensure that no one comes in. Understood. After informing Hisu to not let anyone in her room, she finally let out a sigh. As Geralt's system, start up, Celestina Inclet Great Tree owned, level 2 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory owned, Albert Kingdom, Rinklet Territory 7th District People. 15 Great Tree Skill. Fertility Protection Level 1. Vegetation grows well around the Great Tree Sweet Nectar Level 1. The Great Tree releases a sweet scent and attracts insects and small animals for a Valenus. It seemed to be going pretty well. She relaxed. I can acquire skills by leveling up the Great Tree, but I want to quickly increase my skill level. Fertility Protection can go up to level 5. The effect will be felt up to a 50 km radius from the Great Tree. She certainly wanted that. The method to level up was to harvest a certain amount. Sweet Nectar can also be leveled up till level 5. When it reaches level 2, bees will gather around the Great Tree and you may collect honey. In other words, beekeeping is possible then. Backquote if that can become one of the village's special products. It will be good point Celeste in a thought. To level this up point ah, that's right. I remembered. It's by growing flowers around the great tree. The more kinds of flowers you have, the higher the level of the backward sweet nectar you can acquire. She decided to go and look for some flower seeds to purchase tomorrow. She was happy that she would be able to level up the skill. Then, let's think of a name for the village. Once decided, she can get it approved by her father, Marquis Rinklet, and have it added to the map. It may take some time for it to get certified by the country, so she could prepare the village in the meantime, by adding the missing things. She was getting excited just by thinking about it. But still, it's pretty difficult to increase the skill level it will go up easily till level 3 but after that, it had some devilish specifications. It's fine even if you don't do it, but it was a good replay element part. Reaching level 3 for each skill, to see the happy ending is enough. You can clear it, even if your skill is lower, if you haven't been able to acquire the skills. The players that just want to enjoy the romance. Don't use the Asgaral system much, but there are also many players that strive to reach higher levels. Celestina was one of those. The problem is the leveling up back quote sweet nectar she knew the way to level it up, but she had to plant large amounts of each flower. She should be able to make a small flower field with those flowers approximately. If she were to do that then the space to grow vegetation around the great tree would reduce. In that case, the amount that she could harvest in order to level up the fertility blessings would reduce. Sweet Nectar attracts bads at level 3, bears at level 4 point and divine beast at level 5 or so it goes. But I have to prioritize the fields first. After all, 100 kinds of flowers were acquired in order to call forth a divine beast. In the first place. Collecting 100 kinds of flower seeds was a challenge. Some are only available if you complete cumbersome quests and some cannot even be bought point if you sell all your property. Even crocs cannot achieve this easily, that's what level 5 is. There's a long way to go but for now, let's do our best. For now, she decided to prepare for tomorrow and then go to sleep. What? Cell's gone out. Soratek visited Celestina's home early in the morning. He wanted to apologize, since he couldn't drop her back home last night. When Hanley informed him that Celestina was out, he looked disappointed. I'm sorry, your highness Soratek. The lady is very happy about borrowing the land from the Marquis so. 
is that so, it's pretty rare for Selesina to got out on her own. Selesina hadn't received any blessings from the spirits, or the gods. Since she was acutely aware of that, she didn't leave the mansion that often. Since Soratek understood that very well, but he somehow managed to invite her out on dates. It was a good sign that Selesina was out to visit the land of her own volition. However, it doesn't feel too good that he isn't the one next to her. It's too bad that we missed each other. I'll come to meet her at another time. Hanley, can you give these flowers to her? Of course. Lady Selesina will surely be very pleased. Hanley took the bouquet of roses from Soratek and expressed thanks politely. Last night's events with the heroine were tiring, but the night has passed and this was now her free time. Soratek also would have become closer to the heroine last night. Selesina thought that the countdown to her engagement, being broken had begun. Meanwhile, they reached their destination by carriage. Lady Cell, your hand please. Woo off. Thank you, Hisu, Toy. They had not come to the village, but to the city of Harmel instead. She took Hisu's hand and descended from the carriage. Toy stood beside her like a guard. Hisu and Toy had sat in the coachman's seat and driven the carriage. They were standing in front of a store that sold western wear for wealthy commoners. It wasn't a store that nobles would visit. The village needed to be developed further, so it would be pretty inconvenient for her to be in a dress. She wanted to touch the soil and work together with everyone. Backquote besides, my purpose is to make the great tree bloom. If the only thing she does is wear a dress and water the tree, the great tree would probably notice it right. Hisu smiled at Selesina. He thought that she was a pampered princess, but after knowing her he realized that she was quite active and dynamic. They rang the doorbell and entered inside. Welcome. A lady came to welcome them. Please take your time and look Arrow, a noble. Please don't mind it. I want clothes that are easy to move in and easy to work in. A. Um. Yes. Please come this way. Selesina took the initiative to speak to the sales lady while Hisu waited behind. Toime shed fur inside the shop, so he waited outside with the carriage. Hisu, what kind of clothes should I buy? You're asking me? I don't really have clothing sense. Hisu had a sober look on his face as he started to look around. Since she asked point he touched the clothes that were lined up. They were all brand new and felt good to touch. Selesina's hair was silvery white and her eyes were baby pink. She had a calm demeanor. Most kinds of clothes would suit her well. Ah that's a hairband, isn't it? It would certainly be better to tie my long hair up. The hairband that Hisu was holding was a hairband with yellow and yellow green glass beads. In order to test it out, she secured her long hair at the back with a hairband. Back quote un, it feels good. She decided to purchase the hairband. What clothes would be good? Easy to move in right. But I think that they shouldn't expose too much skin. That's why, this one. Hissa held out a one piece that was longer than the knees. It had a pale baby pink apron base. A color that matched her eyes and there was some contrasting jade green used in it. The skirt portion was a reddish sepia, so that even if it were to get dirty, it wouldn't stand out. It's really cute. Thank you Hisu. I don't know if this is fine though. Hisu seemed a little troubled as he looked at the shop assistant. He looked at her and wondered if Celestina's appearance would look strange. Seeing him looking at her, the shop assistant smiled immediately. It suits you very well. Do you want to try it on? Thank you. Then if it's alright, can I try it on right now? Of course, please come this way. She willingly accepted Celestina's request and guided her to the trial room. 
There was a small carpet inside the trial room along with a chair and a hanger. Do you need any help in changing your clothes? Ah, only in taking this dress off. Could you please help me? Of course. She could wear the clothes they chose easily, but it was a little difficult to take off the dress that the maids made her wear so securely. She could do it with a little time, but she didn't want to keep Hisu and Shop Lady waiting. Then, I'll help you out. Thank you, it's a big help. They entered the trial room and came out in a couple of minutes. How is it? Hisu. Super cute. She had come out of the trial room shyly, but Hisu praised her with sparkling eyes. Backquote if you say that so straightforwardly, it's embarrassing. Celestina smiled happily and thanked him with a red face. It's good that I asked you to choose Hisu. Let's buy flowers next and head to the village. Yes. Hisu paid for the clothes and they left the store. Let's buy flower seedlings. I want to grow three different types around the great tree. It'll feel more lively if we grow some flowers. When Celesina, Hisu, and Toy purchased the flower seedlings and reached the village, all the villagers stopped working and gathered around them. They had come to greet Celesina. Welcome Lady Celesina. The potato plants are growing at an amazing speed. We may even get to harvest them in a few days time. Celestina thought that it was certainly due to the blessings of the great tree, when she heard what the villagers said. In that case, she'll be able to level up even faster than planned. Ah, flowers. A little girl noticed the flowering plant that Hisu was holding. There were no flowers in this village, so she was probably happy to see them. Celestina called out to the children and crouched down to meet their eyes. We are planning to plant flowers around the great tree now. Really? Can I help out too? Of course. With Celestina's permission, the children rushed to the great tree. The word that they had done till now seemed to be taking shape slightly so Celestina quickly looked at the young lady who was with them. I'm sorry, um I'm a debt, Lady Celestina. I've made baskets out of vines. So this work is not a problem. If it's fine, can I join in to plant the flowers as well? Yes, of course. Thank you, Adet. Adet and the kids decided to plant the flowers near the great tree. There were three types of flowers that Hisu was holding. Small cute white clovers, tulips in various colors, and astragalus that bore flowers that released a lot of nectar. It will be done once they finish planting around the great tree. Woof woof, ah, oh I, toy, don't go wild around the place where we've just planted flowers. Hisu went around several times to get a hold of toy who was happily frolicking around. The villagers had their attention focused on the two of them. Back quote if it's now, it'll be alright. Ask Garol system, start up. Celestina Inklet Great Tree Owned, Level 2 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory Owned, Asbird Kingdom Inklet Territory District 7 People. 15 Great Tree Skill Fertility Protection Level 1, Vegetation Grows Well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree. Soil Quality Up. Sweet Nectar Level 2, The Great Tree Releases Sweet Nectar and Attracts Butterflies and Bees. Back quote yup, the sweet nectar level had increased. Bees start appearing from level 2, and if you place a beekeeping box then you can collect honey. This village doesn't have much, so we can secure some income by extracting honey. Back quote if I request Mr. Gats, will he make a beekeeping box? It's fine if she doesn't plan everything to that end, she needed to discuss it first. Since the level of backquote sweet nectar had increased, bees were flying around the great tree. These bees are called backquote flower bees, they are special bees that collect honey. They don't appear in the wild, but they are mostly seen around the great tree. 
They are yellow in color, but they have a flower blooming on their buttocks therefore they are known as flower bees. They do have a needle, but they don't sting people or animals. Kaya, there are bees. Seeing the children hurriedly fleeing Celestina called out that it's alright with a smile. These bees are flower bees. They collect nectar from the flowers and make honey. Honius and that sweet stuff? That's right. But we need a beekeeping box for that. We should discuss it with Mr. Gats. They made a doubtful expression when they heard Celestina. It didn't seem like you could get your hands on honey so quickly. Hisu also seemed to think that, but he said that we should speak to Gats immediately. Adet noticed what was happening and told Celestina I'll call him so please wait here Lady Celestina. I'm sure that Gats and Grandpa Anton would also like to see the flower bees. Thank you, Miss Adet point then I'll leave it to you. Yes. I'll go and call them immediately. Adet quickly went towards Anton's home. Can honey be made that easily? Hisu asked. I'm also not sure of the details, but if we make some boxes and place netted boards inside then it should be alright. It should be done in, as soon as 3 days. Can it be collected that fast? Amazing. Normally it would take longer but this was the game system running so once the expected time has passed, a certain amount of honey can be collected within a certain duration of time. Backquote that if the level of backquote sweet nectar is up to a certain level. We need to level up by harvesting potatoes. That will increase the radius of the influence of the great tree and hence more fields can be planted. Lady Cell, Mr. Gats has come. Mr. Anton is with him as well. She looked towards them to find that they were hurrying here with a debt. A debt probably explained the situation to them. What's this? There are lots of bees. The startled Gats and Anton started looking around the great tree. It was rare to see many flower bees. Backquote maybe it's also the first time that they saw them. Anton and Gats relaxed once they realized that Celestina was present. They immediately came over bowed and greeted her. Thank you for waiting Lady Celestina. We heard from Odette that these bees can be used to produce honey Celestina nodded back quote yes to Gats' statement. These flower bees gather around flowers. Ah, they don't attack humans, so you can relax. In fact, if you prepare some flowers from them then they will live together with you in a friendly manner. Gats visibly relaxed at Celestina's words. He was worried that the bees might sting the children. We've collected some wood at the back. Let's use that to make it. Thank you. I'll come with you to tell you more about it. Hisu. Backquote yes. Celestina called out to Hisu and Toy came along as well. The three of them went with Gats to make the preparations. The wood was piled up behind Anten's house. Gats chose the wood and confirmed it with Celestina. It was a solid dark brown wood and it was sliced in the shape of a board. With this, the box could be made without any distortions. Please make 5 square beekeeping boxes. And please place the nets horizontally inside. Horizontally? Not vertically? Yes. Flower bees use special fluids to make baskets in the mesh, and then they collect honey within those. Flower bees are different from regular bees that's why it's easy to make a beekeeping box for them. In addition, you can collect with honey in a fun way without worrying about their sting. Understood. I'll make it to those specifications. Thank you. In the meantime, I'll make some preparations. Understood. After leaving it to Gats, Celestina, Hisu, and Toy went to the city of Harmel to shop. Three days had passed since Gats installed the boxes. That's right three days. Backquote we can collect honey today. She went shopping with Hisu for this day. After loading onto the carriage they headed to the village. Since she had informed the villagers 
that some event was going to take place today. They had decided to gather near the great tree. Woof, nnn, fu fu fu. Toy is also happy, right? We can eat delicious stuff today. Toy was the only one inside the carriage with her, so Celestina didn't have to mind her language. Hisu was the coachman, so he wouldn't hear her. After a little while, Hisu called out that they had reached and opened the carriage door. You're in a good mood Lady Cell. Thank you, Hisu. She accepted Hisu's hand and got down from the carriage. They headed towards the great tree. All the villagers were gathered there. Did you wait long? No, no. We came early, since we couldn't wait. Well, I've also been impatiently waiting for this. She greeted Anton, and then the rest of the villagers. This is where it starts. Hisu. Yes, I'll prepare it here. Hisu brought out five bottles, when Celestina called out to him. These bottles were to be filled with honey. Let's collect the honey. I want to see it fast. Honey is really sweet right? The kids were excited, and their eyes were shining. Hisu and I will fill one bottle. Please fill the rest of them amongst yourselves. They removed the netted plate from the box and the flower bees flew away. The plate was full of golden honey. She held the plate with Hisu and slowly poured the honey into the bottle. The side of the plate was made, so that pouring would be easy. Amazing so honey is made like this. That's right. We must express thanks to the bees that collected it for us. Yes. Celestina so emptied one plate and the bottle was filled to the brim. Please fill the rest of the bottles like this. I'll make some preparations with Hisu in the meantime. The villagers had closely watched them pouring the honey, so they used the tools provided by Celestina to extract the rest of the honey. Stones were piled up, and a fire was started. A metal plate was placed atop the fire to begin the preparations for cooking. They were going to make pancakes. It wasn't elaborate and this was definitely something that they could eat with honey, Celestina thought. Of course, she could eat them in the city, but homemade ones would certainly be more delicious. Backquote besides, I'm sure the children haven't tried this before she definitely wanted to see if their honey was delicious. There was a hissing sound when the dough was spread onto the metal plate. The lady commonly responsible for the cooking immediately responded. Adette was greatly interested and wanted to help. We are making pancakes that can be eaten by pouring honey onto them. They're delicious. Pancake. I've heard that name before. It's supposed to be so delicious that you'll melt. She seemed to have longed to taste pancakes. Adette looked happy. I'll teach you how to make them so will you bake them? Of course. Please leave it to me Lady Celestina. Once the dough on the surface dries a little it's time to flip them over. This way eh? What a beautiful color. Celestina was satisfied with the beautiful color and handed over the spatula to Odette and asked her to try it. Understood, Yosh. Odette let out a scream and then laughed. The shape was a little distorted, but she was able to cook it beautifully. Hisu served the pancakes in plates to the villagers. They would be able to collect honey again in three days, so it was okay to eat all this honey, Celestina thought. All the villagers excitedly brought the pancakes to their noses and inhaled the delicious scent. She wanted to eat it, but not everyone had got this, yet so she decided to be patient. Soon everyone had their pancakes. Celestina cleared her throat and spoke. Everyone, thanks to your cooperation we could collect this honey. I was thinking of making this a specialty product of this village. She looked at the potatoes growing around the great tree. More extravagant leaves had grown. They may be able to harvest them by tomorrow. It was certainly because of the great tree's skill that the speed of growth was so fast. It was pretty smooth. Her face became warm. 
Celestina was so happy that she had tears in her eyes, but she held them back and smiled. Let's eat all the honey collected today, in order to know its taste. If you pour some on the pancake it's delicious so please eat it. There are second helpings as well. Let's thank the gods for their blessings and eat. Thank you to the gods for the food. When Celestina said the prayer everyone followed. Immediately after they began to eat. Delicious. Gats was the loudest. He seemed to have been looking forward to it, since he made the boxes. The others also seemed to look blissful as they ate the pancakes. A villainous is also not garbage, Celestina thought, when she looked at the villagers. Harmel was the closest city to the 7th district that Celestina was responsible for. She spent a lot of time over the last several days at the family house in Harmel. The night had passed, and it was dawn. Light was filtering into the room. Celestina was seriously looking at her desk. It's already morning. I still can't decide. Celestina lost her graceful way of speaking. Even though I wanted it done by today. She had pulled an all-nighter and her shoulders were slumped. This was her true personality, so it couldn't be helped. This was her personality in her previous life, so it was a habit that couldn't be erased. She had to live with it. I can't decide on the name for the village. I don't even have a good naming sense. In her previous life, she would often stare at her game screen trying to decide on a name for the territories or characters that didn't have a default name in the game. She had a syndrome that didn't allow her to decide on names. If she was playing the game then it would have been easier, but now she was living in the game, and she had a village that was entrusted to her. I don't want to choose a weird name. She pulled an all-nighter in order to find a cool name. Celestina sighed as she stared at the table thinking about discussing it with Hisu. On the way to the village, Celestina was massaging her face in circular motions inside the carriage. Toy was happily watching her, but Celestina wasn't in a good mood. She had spent the night on the table so there were, was a mark on her face. Woof, it's okay, it'll disappear by the time we reach the village. Celestina hugged Toy tightly, and enjoyed the feeling of his fur. Toy, you're so warm, I want to just stay like this. Celestina drifted into a deep sleep, while hugging Toy's warm fur. They reached the village soon. Hisu called out to her back quote Lady Cell as usual, but there was no response, since she was asleep. Hisu wondered why, and opened the door to the carriage. Point looks like she hadn't slept, because she was thinking of a name for the village. Should he let her sleep inside the carriage for a little more? But he knew that she was excited to decide on the name for the village and harvest the potatoes today. Un, what should we do toy, woof, ah, if you make such a loud sound. NNN Celestina woke up. Hisu smiled as he watched her wake up, and realized that it couldn't be helped. Aaaa, I slept well. Toy's fur feels so good Celestina let out a large yawn. Since she was now awake, she had reverted back to her normal speech. Hisu smiled as he watched her, and informed her that they had reached. Hisu. I, I slept off. Sorry. No. Good work Lady Celestina. Do you want to rest inside the carriage for a little while more? Hisu told her that it was fine, but she nodded no. Today is an important day. Let's go to the great tree. Certainly. Hisu lent his hand to Celestina to help her alight. Anton came to welcome them immediately. We've been waiting for you Lady Celestina. Thank you for coming to welcome me. Let's quickly go to the great tree and harvest the potatoes. Yes. All the villagers have been waiting. Since she had slept so well, she was full of enthusiasm as the walk to the great tree. All the villagers came to welcome her. Lady Celestina, the potatoes are amazing. This kind of harvest in this village is truly a miracle. 
seeing the villagers so happy, Selesina felt that it was a good thing that she gave it her all. Shall we harvest the potatoes? Please wait a little. We must do something before we harvest the potatoes. Something we must do. Selesina slowly looked around at all the villagers 14 of them were gazing at her with hopeful eyes. She took in a deep breath and spoke. I wanted to decide on a name for this village. All of them cheered. They seemed to have been pretty concerned about the name. Once the village had its name, they can also interact with other villages once they had a name and description. A name for this village. Yes. However, I haven't thought of a name. Yet Celestina lowered her eyebrows and the villagers started to give various names. Since it's the 7th district, how about Ninahoshi village? The village of honey. How about we use Lady Celestina's name for the village? Potato village. The adults were thinking hard, but the children said the first thing that came to their mind. She smiled looking at that and soon started to laugh. She soon noticed that Hisu was making a serious expression standing next to her. Just like the villagers, Hisu seemed to be thinking hard as well. Hisu, do you have any suggestions? Selin. How about we use your name Lady Selesina to make a name for the village? Selin village. Bay, based on my name? That's a little embarrassing though, wouldn't a name that features the uniqueness of this village be better? Selesina was flustered with Hisu's suggestion. She nodded no to tell him that it wouldn't work but Anton immediately called out that back quote it's very nice. The other villagers also nodded in agreement. Agreed. It's a very good name. Adet clapped her hands and agreed immediately. I think it's good too. Selin village sounds great. This is village Selin. 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 The children also seemed to have taken a liking to it, so Selesina could no longer say that she didn't want it. Hisu looked satisfied, and it seemed like he wouldn't agree to anything other than Selin village. Backquote using my Nama looks like I have to be prepared to accept the worst point then Selin village it is. When Selesina declared that, the great tree flashed brightly and suddenly grew in size. Brand new leaves grew, and it was radiant with light. The surrounding area was also bathed in light and the soil seemed to sparkle a little. Backquote Yosh, I got a new skill. The act of naming a province is one of the skill acquisition quests. The skill endows more blessings around the field surrounding the great tree which results in greater harvest. In other words, the number of potatoes that can be harvested will increase. This is why Selesina wanted to name the village before harvesting the potatoes. Although it is dim, the villagers are hurrying to the sparkling fields. It's the blessings of the great tree. I think the harvest yield would have increased slightly. To think that something like this great tree is amazing. Anton looked at the great tree sincerely, bowed, and thanked the great tree. The other villager also followed his lead. Let's harvest the potatoes. Yes. With Celestina's signal, everyone immediately starts to harvest the potatoes. It's amazing to be able to harvest your own crops. They dug up the fields with great enthusiasm and harvested the potatoes. In a matter of moments, the number of harvests needed to level up were collected. The level goes up when you harvest 50. She happily opened the Asgeral system. Everyone was still appreciating the potatoes. Asgeral system. Startup. Celestina Rinklet Village Name. Selin Great Tree Owned. Level 2 Guardian Beast. Toy Territory Owned. Albert Kingdom, Wrinklet Territory District 7 people. 15 Great Tree Level Up. Vegetation grows well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, Level 2. The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. New. Territory named, yield increases wa. 
to think that I'll be able to get so many. A young man with orange brown hair exclaimed. He was holding potato stems with five potatoes on them. Celestina saw that and instinctively exclaimed that it was amazing. She made an effort point to encouragingly walk over to him. Amazing. As expected of a man's strength. Lady Celestina. I got three Celestina showed him the potatoes he harvested. Can I have your name? Ye, yes. I'm, um point Rio. He was happy to be called by his name. He seemed like a bright, friendly guy. He could be the person who would generally set the mood. Mr. Rio isn't it? I'm planning to cook the potatoes now. Will you help me? Of course. He instantly nodded yes to Celestina's request and looked at her with an expression that was asking back quote what should I do? Let's wash the potatoes first. Hisu will prepare the utensils to cook the potatoes by then. That's right, we can cook them if we don't wash them. I'll immediately call Eric and Roger to come and wash them with me. I'll prepare the utensils immediately. Rio called out to the two men and went to the well with the potatoes. There were three young men in this village and two older men, Gats and Anton. Hisu who was waiting by Celestina went to prepare the utensils that he had asked Gats for. The potatoes that everyone harvested together, she definitely wanted to taste them. Just like the time with the honey, she planned to eat them with everyone first and then sell them or store them. Backquote when you think of potatoes it's surely those two things right. Ah, uh, I want to quickly eat it. Celestina couldn't wait. She called out to Toy and went after Hisu. Her heart beat loudly when she met him for the first time. But Miria didn't think that it was due to love. However, her heart felt strange only when she met Soratek. When she saw him, her eyes would follow him and she would notice him without exception. Backquote AHH. Looks like I've fallen for Lord Soratek. But Lord Soratek is together with Lady Celestina. He had a K already, moreover, he was the crown prince of the country. Honestly, she should give up on Soratek. However, there was no way that Miria could forget about Soratek. She wanted to meet him more. She wanted to dance with him. She wanted to drink tea with him. She wanted to laugh by his side. Her desire continued to grow. Lord Soratek and Lady Celestina don't spend much time together, isn't it? The minimum limit seemed to be the evening party. She hadn't seen Celestina at tea parties either. When Miria asked the girl she was friends with, she was told that Celestina doesn't venture out too much. Since she didn't have any blessings, she felt embarrassed to go out. Miria's friend laughed as she told her. That's why Miria thought shallowly that maybe she had a chance with Soratek. I possess the blessings of the god of fertility free. I could certainly help in making this country fruitful. There were lots of people who received blessings from the spirits, but only a few received blessings from a god. This was a point that could help her win over Celestina and possibly give her the power to stand beside Soratek. Miria silently inhaled deeply and told herself that it would be alright. Soratek would certainly choose her who had the blessings from a god, she told herself. Point R. The carriage has stopped. Right now, Miria was riding in a carriage going to her destination. Lady Miria, we've reached the backquote village of the 7th district. Thank you. The escort knight opened the door to the carriage. She took his hand and alighted elegantly. Going out was dangerous, so women always went with an escort. The man lowered his head and pointed in the direction of the village. This way. That's right, this was Celestina's village. Apparently, Lady Celestina really wanted to borrow some land from her father and manage it. She won't even go to evening parties and she doesn't even meet Lord Soratek much.
Miria was really curious as to why Selesina was doing this. There were two purposes for today. The first one was to ask whether Selesina loved Soratek. If she didn't then Miria wanted to wholeheartedly approach Soratek. The other purpose was the great tree. When Miria entered the village with her escort, she could hear lively voices coming from the center of the village. Looks like all the villagers were up to something. What are they doing there? Um, there is something inside the oil. Sliced potato? I've not heard of a dish like that. She met her escort's eyes when she saw the strange scene spread before her. Celestina was dressed like a villager and she was at the center. Even if she was wearing something like that, you couldn't hide that beauty. There was the great tree a little away from her. That, the great tree sprouted, it grew leaves as well. She met her escort's eyes in shock. She said that it was impossible. It was said that only people who were blessed would be able to grow the great tree. Miria thought the same. She didn't have any blessings points so how did she? Miria's mind was spinning. If the great tree can grow, even if you don't have any blessings, that it wasn't so surprising that Soratek chose Selesina. Miria unconsciously bit her lips. Point I'll greet Lady Selesina. Yes. I'll wait at the back. Miria nodded at the escort knight and went towards the center of the village and called out to Selesina. Lady Selesina, hope you're well. Point Lady Miria, hope you're doing well too. Selesina blinked her eyes surprised to see Miria suddenly appear before her. She never expected her to come to a place like this. Miria asked the surprised Selesina something that she was curious about. Um, what are you doing? Backquote ahh point this ice were harvested potatoes for the first time, so we are cooking them. It's called backquote potato chips and backquote potato butter. Celestina explained to her that both of them were delicious, so Miria extended her hand out and took one to try. She bit into it and found the crunchy texture to be extremely appetizing. She instinctively felt like she wanted more. Celestina seemed to know that already as she gave her some potato chips with a smile on her face. Thank you Lady Celestina. It's delicious. I heard that Lady Celestina was entrusted with some land and I became interested. Is that so? Thank you for your concern. Thanks to everyone's help we are doing well. Yes, I was surprised. The food is delicious and the great tree also grew. Miria walked to the great tree and narrowed her eyes as she exclaimed that it was amazing. The people that possess the blessings of God certainly desire to grow a great tree. They always dream of growing the best great tree in the entire world. Lady Celestina. Can I also grow a great tree together with you? Point A. Celestina spoke out unconsciously due to Miria's unexpected request. Celestina couldn't believe that which had just taken place as her eyes flew open in shock. But she immediately inhaled deeply in order to calm down and maintain a normal state of mind. I should introduce myself to the people of the village. I'm Miria Saltimal. I possess the blessings of the god of fertility free. Miria smiled at the villagers. The villagers were really surprised to know that Miria had the blessings of god. Therefore, they welcomed her. Well, they couldn't really treat a sudden visit from a noble as something bad. Backquote did she leave Lord Soratek alone and came to me. Celestina wanted to scream that she was making a mistake. But she held back. Lady Miria, this is Selen Village. Thank you for visiting us. You decided on the name. It sounds the same as your name. It's great. She smiled and Celestina was wondering about the purpose of her visit. Her request from earlier, the one where she wanted to grow a great tree together was rejected. She was using the system and doing her best to help the tree grow. And she really didn't want anyone else to also be a part owner of her tree. 
Backquote besides, she came here suddenly without prior notice. It's insane Miria's family, the Saltimals didn't own any territory. For that reason, it was alright, if she decided to go to another territory. However, it was good manners, to contact the Lord in advance, if they wished to visit the territory. There were certain exceptions. For example, when you planned to visit the Lord of the territory. In that case, you must write a letter with the purpose of your visit and wait for a reply this was the etiquette required, no matter the scene. Celestina wanted to sigh thinking about the fact, that Miria didn't even know about that. Backquote the house of the heroine, the Saltimal family doesn't own a great tree. Even though she has the blessings of the god of fertility, this certainly would seem like a great treasure to her. But, to raise a great tree in the territory of another person is point R. Maybe she wanted to ask Celestina something. Mr. Anton, I would like to relax and have some tea with Lady Miria. I'm really sorry, but can we borrow your home? Of course. Celestina received Anton's permission and decided to have tea with Miria at his house. She told the villagers to enjoy the food as they left the place. She drank the tea poured by Hisu inside. Toy was waiting outside so the only ones here at the moment were Hisu, Miria, and her. I heard that the village didn't have a name, but it looks like you've named it. Will it be listed now? No, we'll work on that hereafter. This village has just started out. But you even have a great tree, that amazing. I heard from Lord Soratek that the great tree is really valuable and that you can't get your hand on it that easily? Miria's eyes were shining, and Celestina immediately understood that she also wanted it. Maybe she asked Soratek. Of course, it would be, wouldn't be able to get it though. Celestina apologized to her with a wry smile. The great tree planted in this village is very precious. I received it from my father. That's why I don't intend to raise it with anyone else. Is that so? She probably thought that I would definitely agree. Miria's face fell and she looked depressed. Point why do you want a great tree to that extent? I do know that you have the blessings of fertility and I understand that you may wish to grow one only nobles who possess territories could grow a great tree. If Miria truly wanted to manage a great tree then she would either have to get married to a family that had territory, or get adopted by one. The royal family also had a great tree, so she could marry the prince. I must apologize to Lady Celestina. A. Celestina was perplexed, since she suddenly wanted to apologize. Maybe she wanted to apologize, since she didn't contact her before coming to visit? In that case, Celestina wanted to accept her apology. I've fallen in love with Lord Soratek. Backquote I know that though. Why is she saying that now? Right here. Hisu who was waiting behind her was startled as well, and his eyes flew open. Miria was destined to be with Soratek, but right now Celestina was his fianca therefore Miria's statement was not appropriate. She didn't seem to have taken any mana lessons. Celestina wanted to sigh. But she suddenly remembered Miria's origins. Miria had a weak body and hence was taking treatment in the countryside. That's why she didn't have enough knowledge about etiquette. She hadn't learned how to dance either. Lady Miria. Yes. I understand your feelings very well. However. I'm Lord Soratek Fianke, and he really cherishes me. Even if Soratek was in love with Miria as well, he still treated Celestina very well. He would certainly treat her well even after their engagement breaks. That's why she must also act appropriately as the Fianke of the Crown Prince Soratek. I'll act as if I didn't hear what you just said. Lady Miria, you must also suppress those feelings. A we are close in age and we may seem like friends, but point I'm the daughter of a Marquis. Besides, 
Right now I'm acting as the Lord of the 7th District that I received from my father. She spoke seriously in order to tell me Rhea but she needed to be aware of her own status. Your straightforwardness might be your strength, but if you really wish to be Lord Soratek's wife then, please study. She surely needed to know her etiquette as a lady, but there was also courtesy amongst nobles, history, geography. There was so much it felt, as if it was as vast as the universe. If she didn't learn that then she would have a really tough time after the happy ending. This was the amount of support that Celestina could give. Yes. Me nodded to Celestina's words looking depressed. Also point you need to make an appointment before visiting a person. I didn't really mind it, but other nobles may protest to your family due to this. A, hey, is that so? Lord Soratek never said anything about that. She was lightly scolding and preaching to Miria, but Celestina was startled in response. Back quote well, the two of them seem to be getting along well. I don't know anything, I'm probably just like a child. Thank you for teaching me various things Lady Celestina. I'll study hard, in order to be appropriate for Lord Soratek. Point is that so? Did she already forget what I just told her? That Miria should suppress her feelings, since Celestina was Soratek's fianche. Declaring her feelings like that is not appropriate. Miria immediately decided to find a tutor, and got up from her seat. Lady Celestina, I enjoyed talking to you today. I said something terrible, but thank you for being friends with me. Can I come again? Yes. It'll be good, if you can send a letter in advance. Of course. Did Celestina's preaching reach me Rhea properly? No, it seems to have reached her that's why she's leaving like that. Then I'll excuse myself Lady Celestina. Take care on your way back. Yes. Thank you. Seeing me Rhea leave with her escort. Celestina released the sigh that she was holding back. Peace had returned to the village once again. Celestina was relieved. Celestina stayed in the house in the city of Harmel very often, but she did also go back to her house in the royal capital. Today she had returned to her house in order to report something to her father. Lady Sel, it seems that it will take a little over two hours for Lord Bethel to return. Hisu informed her, while pouring tea and Celestina nodded silently. She was sitting on the sofa lightly as she took the teacup in her hand. She looked exhausted, as if she could fall asleep at any moment. How about you go to sleep for today? Thank you Hisu. But I have something, that I need to urgently report to father. Is it about that girl Lady Miria? Even Hisu who wasn't well versed in etiquette seemed to think terrible of Miria. It would be only natural to report that to father who was the lord of the territory. Celestina looked up at Hisu with soft eyes. I won't report it to father. If she told him then he would certainly contact Miria's family. Perhaps if she told him then he would even ask Celestina to return back home. He would probably tell her that. Since something like that has happened then come back home, stop managing the village, and prepare to become the queen. Even if Celestina wasn't the lord of the village, the future was still guaranteed. Backquote I would certainly want to forgive this. If father intervenes then Miria would certainly be rejected, but that shouldn't be done. Backquote the heroine is destined to be with Lord Soratek, it'll turn into a bad end otherwise. If that happens, then Celestina dies as well. She definitely wanted to avoid that that's why she decides to keep it a secret. Point then what work do you have with Lord Bethel? Of course it's about the Selen village. I want to register the name. Once we do, that we can trade within the territory. Once her father approves it, they will be able to trade freely within the Wrinklet territories. In order to trade with the other territories, they would require the approval from the king. 
that's why Celestina wanted to quickly let him know that they had decided on a name for the village. That way they would not only be able to trade, but the 7th district would also have a name. Seeing Celestina speak so happily, Hisu also relaxed. I was a little worried about the thing with Lady Miria, but it seems fine. It was surely a surprise that she came without notice but it would have been fine if she had given prior notice. That's right. Celestina and Hisu both smiled cheerfully. The horse-drawn carriage started to move slowly once Bethel boarded it in front of the royal castle. He wanted to return home early since he heard the Celestina was back but it took him more time than he had imagined. Bethel removed the reports from inside his bag and looked over them. The documents were related to Celestina. What she was doing as she acting lord of the land he had had a subordinate report to him secretly every day. I'm surprised that the great tree point is growing well. There were also reports that the soil was sparkling and that they had made some mysterious cuisine with potatoes. She was liked by the villagers as well. Everything seemed to be fine. The daughter that Bethel thought he had to protect closely had grown up more than he had imagined. But there was a point of concern. Saltimal House's Lady Miria she had paid a visit to Celestina without any prior notice suddenly. Celestina and Miria seemed to have spoken, and then Miria return home. She also seems close to Prince Soratek. Should I do something in order to help Celestina out? Bethel was wondering what to do. However, Celestina was the future queen of this country. He believed that she needed to be able to handle such things on her own. Once she became queen, some people would come close to her, and some would be hostile to her. Learning how to handle Miria would be a good lesson for Celestina to remember. First I'll deal what Celestina wishes to discuss is. Bethel reached the mansion and decided to speak to Celestina who had been waiting for him, but we are able to collect honey now and we harvested potatoes for the first time. We also decided on the name of the village. Is that so? Celestina didn't voice out even the back quote me and Miria's name. Bethel noticed this and smiled internally. Celestina had probably already thought about what would happen if she were to tell him. She probably thought that he would tell her that to come back to the mansion and prepare to become the queen instead of dealing with her. I have something that I want to request of you, father. Un? Can you please approve of Selin as soon as possible? We want to use the potatoes we harvested to do some business. Right now the village of Selin had no income. For that reason, she quickly wanted to able to trade with other places. Honestly speaking, Celestina was too busy to think about Miria. Bethel heard his daughter's request and nodded. Alright, I know that you are doing your best every day. I'll complete the procedure during the day tomorrow and you should be able to move freely by the day after tomorrow. Thank you, father. Bethel watched Celestina break into a big smile Bethel also loosened up. Until now his daughter was always at the mansion and never left the house and he didn't really like that. He was really glad that he gave her the position of the acting lord. Raya, lovely weather. Today the weather in Asgeral is perfect. Celestina's eyes opened early in the morning and she peeked out of the window. Celestina drew in a deep breath. And as she exhaled, she broke into a wide smile. Back quote no, no if I show this kind of expression to Hisu then I'll be questioned. However, she continued to smile. Bethel had recognized the village, and from today onwards it would be officially registered. All the major facilities in each town would also be notified, so they could now begin trading. A-H-H, I'm looking forward to it. I want to go to the village, quickly I I. Till her maiden came to wake her up, Celestina continued to simulate her plans for today in her mind. Once they reached Selin village, Celestina called out to Rio and Odette who seemed to be working. 
she had explained the plans for today to Hisu, and she wanted him to explain it to the two of them. Lady Selesana, Sir Hisu, good morning. Good morning. Selesana greeted them, and looked over to them. They had kept a huge pile of potatoes washed and ready. They would have surely been working hard, since early in the morning. Thank you, both of you, woof, when Selesana expressed her gratitude. Toy barked happily as well. She stroked his soft fur happily as she praised him, telling him that he's a good boy. Toy let out a pained grunt. Toy. Could he possibly dislike being stroked? Selesina hurriedly let go of him. However, Hisu laughed and told her that that wasn't the case. He seems to want to eat the potatoes. A. Does Toy eat potatoes? He had been fed properly that's why she didn't think of giving him the potatoes that they harvested. Come to think of it, Toy was the guardian beast of this village so there was nothing strange if he ate the harvest. Backquote but is it something that he can eat? Dogs can't eat onions and chocolate I think it should be fine since Toy isn't a dog. As a divine beast, he is several times more amazing than a normal dog. Or more like the differences like heaven and earth. Mr. Rio, can we give some potatoes to Toy? Of course. When Rio gave the washed potatoes to Toy, he happily started eating them. Celestina immediately relaxed. Backquote that's right, you can acquire skills if a divine beast eats your harvest. She definitely couldn't start the system now but this would result in the strength of the divine beast increasing. The strength is also increased when monsters that invade the village are defeated. But that opportunity was very rare. Once Toy had finished eating it was time to leave. Today I'm thinking of putting up food stalls at Harmel. That will be the first income for this village. Yes. Rio and Adet were very enthusiastic and they seemed very happy to be able to sell something themselves. Celestina and the others left to go to Harmel. You can rent a food stall at the market in Harmel. The currency in this world was called backquote luz and the value was almost similar to Japan. However, they didn't use currency but coins instead. You could rent a food stall by paying 3000 luz for one day. If you need one single magic hob then that is also installed. Additional hobs are charged separately. This time one hob would be enough. They paid for the rental of the stall. Toy looks like the mascot of the stall. Please call lots of customers. Woof. Toy was standing with a posture in front of the stall. Which made Celeste in a smile. They immediately started to prepare. Today they planned to sell. Potato chips. Mr. Rio, do you remember how to make it? Of course. It was so simple and delicious that I couldn't forget, even if I wanted to. How reliable. Rio was the main chef and Hisu would assist him. Adet would sell, and Celestina would help her out. To begin with, Hisu and Rio sliced large quantities of potatoes. In the meantime, Celestina and Adet put up a sign on their stall that said backquote potato chips. One bag was to be sold for 200 luz. The amount of chips would be the same as that which is commonly available in Japan. After slicing the potatoes, they began to fry them. They removed the fried chips from the oil into a separate container to let it cool and then packed them into bags. They decided to start selling once they had a certain number of bags ready. Welcome, how about trying some backquote potato chips from the village of Selin? Woof woof, Adet called out, and Toy barked, in order to lend a hand. Her voice gathered the eyes of the passerby. However, it wasn't that easy. What's this? A new stall? More like was there a village by the name of Selin? Territory? It's the first time I heard of potato chips. Although people were curious, no one came forward, since both the Selin village and potato chips weren't heard of before. A debt lowered head and muttered, we are in trouble. Point R. Selin, isn't it that one? 
The new village in the Baron 7th district? Uh, I remember seeing that notice at the government office. The two men seemed to know about it, so they came to check it out. WAA, there are people who know about our village. Lady Celestina, amazing. I'm so happy Adette was so moved that people recognized the village that she teared up. She immediately wiped her face with her sleeve and called out to the two men who were happily chatting. This is Selin Village's specialty, please do try it out. Those thin things? Doesn't seem like it'll fill my stomach. Adet recommended it, but it didn't seem to be appetizing enough. It would certainly be difficult to fill their stomach with these, but that wasn't important. I wanted to try them out as a snack. Back quota, that's right. How about you try one and check it out? We won't expect you to buy it, since you tasted it. Celestina said that, and offered the chips to them. Well, in that case eh, a noble? The two men noticed the petite and beautiful Celestina with her soft manners and realized it. The one backing the new village seemed to be a noble. Moreover, even if Celestina tried to be inconspicuous she was still very much noticeable. With her silky soft silver white hair, that seemed to be well taken care of, moreover, that color was very rare. That was certainly a character design that would be noticeable, so that you could tell immediately that this was the villainous lady that was abandoned by the gods. Could it be that back quote one without blessings? Oh I, idiot. Don't sit it in front of the actual person. You could be persecuted. As expected, people did know very well that she didn't have blessings. Back quote I think it's better if I don't stand at the storefront. It's better to do miscellaneous work at the back. As Celestina was thinking about that, Adette angrily told the two men that they were very rude. Lady Celestina recognized our village. She even gave us work. She is an amazing person. Does the fact that she has no blessings hold any relevance? Ah, no. It doesn't do it? Lady Celestina extended a helping hand out to us who were just doing our best to survive every day. That's why I don't say such things, Adet tearfully told the two men. She conveyed that she was truly grateful to Celestina and loved her. Celestina almost cries. Backquote I was the one who was savage even though I came in suddenly like an acting lord. Thank you, Miss Adet, for standing up for me. No, I'm sorry for suddenly bursting out like that. Especially in a market, something like this, right? Due to our location, our interaction was very noticeable. The people walking around had stopped and were watching us. The two men seemed to be looking down, since they probably felt bad, but they suddenly bowed. I'm sorry, second said a horrible thing. I'm really sorry as well. Celestina panicked when they apologized in a loud voice. But as a noble she had to accept their apology otherwise they would think that she didn't forgive them. I accept your apology. I don't really mind so please, don't let it bother you. Lady Celestina thank you. Just like a goddess. Celestina smiled and told them that it's an exaggeration. She then turned towards the stall and asked Hisu for help. Lady Cell is beautiful, so I can understand your feelings that she seems like a goddess. Hisu, you don't need to back them up. Point well, why don't we have the two of them spread the deliciousness of the chips? Hisu said that and pushed chips into the mouths of both men. What brute force, there was no time to stop it. Celestina and Adet thought. Crunch. The two men who ate the chips widened their eyes and looked around. They then looked at each other, and without saying anything, smiled. Delicious. What is this? The texture is so good. I'll buy it, please. Yes, thank you. Hisu immediately declared the purchase, and handed over the bag to them.
After taking 200 loves, the two men immediately started eating it with a joyful expression. Approximately one hour had passed, but Celestina was happy that there was no problem. Lady Cell, we'll get busy from now. Just as Isu said that, the people who were watching quickly formed a line in front of the stall. I would like to buy some potato chips. Two bags for me too. Yee, yes. Thank you. Adet did the billing Rio quickly made more chips. Hisu arranged the line and Celestina assisted Adet and Rio, in order to not stand out too much. The people who bought the chips were munching on it happily. It seems that the people of Harmel had liked the chips. They sold the chips till they ran out of them. During a short break, Celestina decided to check the system. Celestina Wrinklet Great Tree owned, Level 3 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory owned, Albert Kingdom, Wrinklet Territory District 7 People. 15 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 2, Vegetation grows well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, Level 2, The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Territory named, yield increases new. The village protected by the divine beast, the strength of the divine beast increases new. Specialty of the village, the recognition of the village increases, since Toy had the harvested potatoes, his strength increased. By selling the products of the village, we had safely secured another skill. Celestina welcomed a promising start. Celestina was managing the village successfully. They had harvested 1000 potatoes by now, and the fertility blessings had leveled up to level 3. However, Soratek contacted her. Apparently she had only been spending time at the village, and hadn't met Soratek at all. That was the problem. Backquote I thought that he would be enjoying dating with the heroine was that not the case. For that reason. She had returned back to the mansion in the royal capital today. Soratek would be coming soon, so they would drink tea and spend time together. The potato chip stall was successful and recently the village had income. Using that income they could now buy basic necessities, crop seedlings, and fertilizer. That's why Celestina wanted to go to the village every day. Besides she also wanted to water her great tree. It's grown till my waist by now good job me. The one who doesn't have blessings. She wanted to praise herself. If it continued to grow like this then the tree blooming within a year may not be just a dream. Even though she didn't have any blessings, the great tree still grew till here. Knock knock there was a knock and his whose voice calling out to her. Back quote lady cell. He seemed to have guided Sora Tech in. Come in. The one that entered was Soratek alone. Hisu seemed to have refrained from coming in. Backquote Lord Soratek. Doesn't seem to like Hisu much after all. Celestina kindly smiled and welcomed Soratek in, but he shook his head in response. Looks like he didn't intend to sit down. Lord Soratek? Why? Celestina looked at Soratek troubled. She was wondering what was up. When Soratek said that they would be going out, and extended his hand out. A. U. M. M. Understood. He seemed to want to go somewhere. They reached the entrance, to find the carriage already prepared with Isu sitting next to the coachman. Backquota. We were going out together that's why he didn't enter the room. Without knowing the destination Celestina got on the carriage with Soratek. Once the carriage slowly started, Soratek's smile disappeared. Point cell. Ye, yes. The atmosphere seemed strange and Celestina subconsciously corrected her posture. Lady Miria came to the village for a visit? Even though I haven't visited it yet. Backquote she arbitrarily came. She wanted to say loudly. But she didn't have to purposely tell him about the thing she said or her blunder. Celestina apologized and explained to him. I mentioned it earlier as well, 
but the village is still not appropriate for your visit. I thought that it might make you uncomfortable that's why it was difficult to invite you. We'll be married in the future right? Don't mind such things. I know that you're trying your best so there is no way that I will be uncomfortable. Lord Soratek. Celestina smiled cheerfully, but a little troubled at those kind words. It can't be helped. Actually there is nothing there yet. There are no shops, no inns, there are only houses for the 14 residents and warehouses. That's why we are going to your village now. No, now. That's right. A-H-H, I got permission from the Marquis so there is no problem. Understood. Without knowing he had even spoken to father. She had to guide him through the village now. Celestina was nervous. They passed their time chatting, and they soon reached the village a little past noon. They were in Sorotek's carriage today, so it was more luxurious. The villagers were startled. Normally they would come forward to give their greetings, but today no one came close. They probably thought that we were visiting for a specific reason. Hisu opened the door to the carriage. Sorotek got down first and escorted Celestina. So this is Selen village. It's small but it looks lively. Thank you, Lord Soratek. Everyone is doing their best for this village. The village was small, so I guess the only the place to guide him to was the great tree in the potato fields. Celestina headed to the great tree together with Soratek when she saw Anton along with an unfamiliar person. He seemed to be visiting from outside the village. So that sells great tree. It's grown well there are even leaves on it. Although it's still small it's powerful, and it looks wonderful. Lord Soratek Celestina was overjoyed to have her great tree praised. I'm really happy. Especially because I can come so far with the great tree, even though I don't have blessings. Yes. You are my fianke, that I'm proud of. Soratek said that as he took Celestina's hand and kissed it. Let's look at the place near the great tree. Yes. Celestina took Soratek near the great tree. Anton and the other person gave their respectful greetings. They seemed to have guessed who Soratek was, so they came to greet him. Lord Soratek, let me introduce you. This is the chief of Selin village Anton. Is that so? I'm Celestina's fianke Soratek Lily Albert. I've heard that this is growing into a better village every day. I would be glad if you would continue to devote yourself and help Celestina out here after as well. I'm the village chief Anton. I'll do my best. They easily finished their greetings and Soratek looked at the great tree once again. He happily squatted down to touch its leaves. It would be fine to remain like this for a little while more. Celestina looked at Anton, and then the man who was with him. Anton immediately introduced him. This man is a merchant from Harnel. He has come here to discuss about opening a branch of his here in this village. Branch? It was bigger than she assumed. The man bowed respectfully and greeted her. I'm Nicholas from Pickard Company. It's an honor to meet you Lady Celestina. Nicholas was one of those people that had tried the potato chips in Harnel. He seemed to believe that this can be a business and hence hurried to come to this village. Backquote Pickard Company, it's a large company in Harnel. It's great for this village if they can open a branch here. First, a shop will open then manpower will also flow in, so the residents will increase. We can then meet the requirements for the great tree to level up. You like the potato chips right? Thank you, Mr. Nicholas. I have heard of Pickett, but I'll leave it to Anton's judgment. I'm thrilled to know that you've heard of it. Then I'll discuss it further with Mr. Anton. Yes. Please go ahead, Anton. Please leave it to me Lady Celestina. The two of them went ahead to Anton's home to discuss a branch. I thought that you might hear about that too but that's not the case. 
Soratek had finished looking at the great tree, and came next to Celestina. I cannot overlook everything hereafter. That's why I must rely on the villagers more and more hereafter. I see. It's Sunder in Clubback's supervision so there isn't a chance of something going wrong. They also know that I'm your fianke. Soratek reassured Celestina that the village was in good condition. Yes, it will become bigger and bigger here after Lord Soratek, Lady Celestina. A. In the middle of Soratek and Celestina's conversation, they heard a cute voice calling out to them. When they turned around to look, Miria was happily waving to them. Yes. The heroine of this game had called out to them. Even though Celestina had previously told her that she had to contact the other party point when she wanted to visit. Backquote I definitely did tell her. She wanted to sigh but held back. With a cheerful expression she was about to call out to Miria to welcome her. But Soratek spoke up first. Sal, did you have a promise with Lady Miria today? Point no. I see. Soratek squinted his eyes and looked at Miria who had suddenly appeared. Even though he was finally able to spend time with Celestina, why did she suddenly come? He let out a small sigh. Today Soratek had a promise with Celestina so there was no way that Celestina would have anything on with Miria. If you look at it objectively, that is. That's why Soratek understood that Miria had come without any prior notice, but he wanted to check with Celestina just in case. Actually, I went to the royal castle in order to meet Lord Soratek, but I heard from the head maid that you had gone out. That's why I quickly wrote a letter to Lady Celestina that I would be coming for a visit. Miria explained proudly, proud that she had followed the proper etiquette. Backquote that letter came to the mansion after I had left points didn't it? There was no way that she would have read it, Celestina sighed in mind. She would only be able to open the letter once she was back in the mansion and Anna informs her that a letter had arrived for her. You sent such a meaningless letter? Soratek replied sourly and let out an amazed sigh. Ah, that, I wanted to become closer to Lord Soratek and Lady Celestina. It was too sudden, right? Sorry. Miria lowered her head and apologized. She looked like she was about to cry. It certainly seemed like she had been bullied by the Vilanus. Celestina was wondering what to do. Since Miria had apologized, she should accept the apology first. If she didn't then rumors that backquote Celestina doesn't accept apologies from an earl's daughter will start to circulate around. Backquote AHH, troublesome. Celestina thought about it, and realized that there was nothing that she could do. However, she didn't show that which was in her mind, but smiled kindly at Miria instead. Lady Miria, don't mind it. Everyone makes mistakes in the beginning. It'll be fine, as long as you take care next time. Lady Celestina, thank you. Miria brightened up and showed a smiling face to Celestina and Soratek. If Cell says, so then let's leave it be. However, Lady Miria, a sudden visit can be troublesome to the other party. Since you're not close to me or Cell, it's only basic manners to write a letter describing the reason and sending it earlier on right. He told her implicitly that, even if it was about visiting the castle, in order to meet him, if you're a noble, you have access to the royal castle without many restrictions. For work or for visits obviously but there was also a royal library inside the castle that could be accessed freely. However, there were areas within the royal castle that were strictly restricted, such as the residence of the royal family. Miria accessed the free zone and would often call out to Soratek when she passes by him coincidentally. Lord Soratek I'm sorry, I be more careful next time. Point yes. 
She slumped and apologized once more. Then she looked around at the surroundings. Just because Celestina and Sorotek were right in front of her, it didn't mean that her etiquette was alright. Selen Village had developed more than the last time that Miria visited, however, she probably hadn't noticed it. There were lots of potatoes proudly growing, and bees proudly flying around. And most importantly, the great tree was growing little by little every day. Even though she didn't have any blessings, the great tree still grew so much, Celestina was happy every time she looked at it. I would like to apologize and make up for the inconvenience caused. Miria said in a high-pitched voice, and turned her hot gaze towards me. Celestina didn't expect to be told something like that and was confused. Backquote does she know how to make up for it? Celestina was concerned that she would do something unexpected. Please behave like a mature adult please. If you don't, Soratek's impression of you will be ruined, and then we'll end up with the bad end. Lady Miria, thank you for your consideration. But, please don't mind it. No, leave it to me. Miria grabbed Celestina's hand and smiled widely. What was she thinking? She went up to the great tree, and touched its leaves. Lady Miria, what are you? Backquote way, don't touch my great tree, so free li i i i i i i i i i Celestina kept her expression normal, but she was screaming inside. Celestina finally possessed a great tree, even though she didn't have any blessings. It was her great tree. Did Miria want to take it away from her? I possess the blessings of the god of fertility free, so I would like to help your great tree grow. Miria brought her hands together in a praying posture, and then watered the great tree with the water she carried in her pocket. As soon as she did that, a black flower bloomed on the great tree. M. My great tree is it's my first time seeing a black flower blooming on the great tree. Celestina was trembling. Soratek shook his head in disbelief. The crown prince Soratek had not only seen the great tree of every territory, but also of the entire kingdom. Soratek was terribly shocked, because he had always only seen warm colored flowers blooming on the great tree. Miria didn't expect something like this to happen, and was almost in tears as she wondered what to do. But even Celestina and Soratek didn't know what to do. Why, my great tree? She wanted to cry and blame Miria. However, she was the daughter of Marquis so there was no way that she could do something so rude. In that case, could she at least cry? When Celestina was wondering if she could humiliate herself like that Hisu called out to her. Lady Cell. Go to the great tree quickly. Touch it. A. A. She reflexively followed Hisu's words rushed to the great tree, and put her hands on it. The moment Celestina fingers touched the great tree, her left eye glowed faintly. Her light eye was warm. There was no pain, but Celestina could feel the warmth. My great tree. When she touched the black flower that had bloomed, she could suddenly see the available options. Let the great be as it is, with its black flower, and let it turn it into a negative tree. Make white flowers bloom, and turn it into Celestina's great tree. She gasped reflexively. Why was she able to see something like this? She also wondered, why she would have the right to choose. No, that's wrong. The choices, they aren't that easy. That's because a black flower had already bloomed on the great tree. Should she turn it white? Wouldn't that change the laws of nature? Backquote what should I do, my hands are, trembling. She knew what she wanted to choose, but she was afraid, and couldn't make a decision. A-H-H, what's the right thing to do? Hisu and Soratek were saying something, but she couldn't hear them. Suddenly there was a loud, sound. Woof, toy. She noticed toy staring at her from across the great tree. His eyes seemed to be telling her that he would protect her, so it would be fine. 
That's because Toy was the guardian beast of Selen Village. She calmed down then, and heard Sora Tech's voice. Sel, get a hold of yourself. Lord Sora Tech. She turned around, and met Sora Tech's eyes. Sel, your left eye. Sora Tech could see a seal in Celestina's eyes. Perhaps this was the seal of blessings, but he had never seen a seal such as this before. Hissy crouched next to Celestina and smiled kindly. It'll be alright, if it's you Lady Cell. Hisu. Celestina swallowed hard, and chose from the choices available through her left eye. Please change the, destiny of the great tree, and turn it into a white flower. The moment Celestina declared, that a breeze blew through Celestina's hair as if stroking it. The black flower petals fell to the ground. In exchange, a new white flower bloomed. You are the white flower was glowing and it eventually settled down. The black color from earlier was nowhere to be seen. The flower was a beautiful silvery white just like Celestina's hair. The petals of the white flower were layered like a beautiful dress. It was truly elegant. It was truly suitable for Celestina who was the daughter of the Marquis. Seeing the flower bloom on the great tree, Celestina teared up. It's my first time seeing such a beautiful flower. It's just like you sell. Lord Soratek Soratek wiped her tears with his fingertips and crouched down and hugged her. He didn't say anything and waited for her to calm down. However, there was one person who couldn't read the air. My flower became white. Turning their eyes to the voice, they remembered that she was still there. Seeing the mysterious spectacle just now, everyone seemed to have forgotten about Miria. When Celestina looked at the ground, they saw the scattered black petals. Back wrote, what should I do with this flower? It did bloom on the great tree so was it alright to throw them away. Celestina put them in her pocket for the time being. Celestina got up with Sora Tech's help, and went towards Miria. Lady Miria. Ye, yes. Earlier I refused your request, to raise the great tree together, didn't I? Did you forget that? Moreover, she hadn't said anything this time. It was only natural, that Celestina was angry. But, if Miria doesn't end up with Sora Tech, then it would lead to the bad ending, and the only thing waiting for Celestina would be her death. Backquote but, if she does end up with Sora Tech, I wouldn't die, but the country would be destroyed. In that case, I would also end up dying she realized. Should I choose my life or the life of the country? Backquote what kind of a stupid thing am I thinking? I want, wanted to help the growth of the great tree as an apology. Since I have the blessings of the free, the god the fertility, I thought that the tree may suddenly grow a lot, I thought that with this even Lord Soratek would be pleased. Miria who expressed her goodwill till then end was even more troublesome than Evelyne. It would be better to inform her father, the Earl. He could probably be requested to give her proper education as a lady. If that doesn't help either then. Backquote what am I thinking? In order to avoid the bad ending, and to avoid her death, she had already decided in her heart, hadn't she? She showed a smile and told me Rhea, is that so? However, the etiquette of nobles isn't that simple. I think it would be best, if you could discuss this with your father, the Earl, Lady Miria. A, my father? But it's about friends, to bother my father with it. Was it alright to bother the prince then? She thought reflexively. However, since Lady Celestina says so, I'll talk to him about it. Yes, please do so. Your father may also be delighted to have his daughter came to discuss it with him. Understood. Thank you Lady Celestina. Celestina calmed her heart. No, there were still a lot of problems, but if the Earl can put a stop to it then there would probably be no more damage. Probably. Hisu bowed to Miria, and showed her the exit. Lady Miria, I'll send you till your carriage. 
Lady Celestina has a promise with Lord Sora Tech today so I'm sorry, but any more than this. Point that's right. I'll return back home today and talk to my father. I'm really sorry for all the inconvenience. I would be really glad if we could get along here after. Take care, Lady Celestina, Lord Sora Tech. Miria apologized and Hisu and Toy sent her off. The ones left at the Great Tree were Celestina and Sora Tech. And the Great Tree with the White Flower. Backquotum, what should I do? Anyway for now I have cleared father's trial. But I don't know what exactly happened to me earlier today. Sora Tech was also confused as he looked into Celestina's left eye once more. Lord Sora Tech, I there was a seal earlier. But right now it's become normal again. I thought it might be the seal of blessings from the gods, but it's difficult to confirm that right now. Yes. However, she always thought that she didn't have any blessings so this was a ray of hope. Let's go to the great shrine and talk to the priest once. Of course, I'll go with you so you can relax. Thank you. It would certainly be good to go to the Great Shrine and ask about this. Celestina nodded. She smiled and thanked him. Point for now. Shall we return? Lots of things. And I'm a little tired. That's right. Let's go back to the mansion and relax. Yes. Hisu returned with good timing. Lord Sora Tech. I'll inform the village chief about returning so how about you go to the carriage first? Ah, alright. Sora Tech nodded and Celestina saw him off. She activated the system. The level had increased, and there was also a new skill acquired. Celestina wrinkled up. Great Tree owned. Level 5 Guardian Beast. Toy Territory owned. Albert Kingdom. Wrinkler Territory District 7 up. People. 18 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 3. Vegetation grows well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar. Level 2. The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. New. Blessings of the Amulet Level 1. No monsters come within 1 kilometer of the Great Tree. Territory named. Yield increases specialty of the village. The recognition of the village increases. Bubble Bubble Celestina sank into the bathtub. Lots of things had happened today, so she was really tired. She sank inside the bathtub and came up when she needed the air. Fire. A bath is the best. She leisurely massaged her feet and activated the Asgaral system. Celestina wrinkled up. Great Tree Owned, Level 5 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory Owned, Albert Kingdom, Wrinkler Territory District 7 Up, People. 18 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 3, Vegetation Grows Well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree and Soil Quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, Level 2, The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Blessings of the Amulet Level 1. No monsters come within 1 kilometer of the Great Tree. Territory named. Yield increases specialty of the village. The recognition of the village increases its growing pretty well considering that it's the territory of Avalanus. She couldn't stop smiling. First, the Great Tree grew from Level 3 to Level 5. If visitors come to the village then the level will increase to 4. And it will go up to 5, when more residents come to stay in the village. The reason that these two requirements were fulfilled, was due to a merchant, named Nicholas who came to the village. He visited the village, had some business conversations, and even moved three of his employees to this village. They had to open a branch office first, and then open a branch store in a little while. The new skill that she acquired, backquote amulets blessings is acquired at level 5, she clearly remembered. She wanted to get it as fast as possible, because it prevented the invasion of monsters within a certain radius, just as it was hinted by the name. It could go up to level 3. 
In order to reach level 2, you had to defeat 200 monsters and 3000. In order to reach level 3, back quote but if you reach level 3 then monsters won't come within a radius of 2.5 kilometers. There were many children in Selin village, so she wanted to increase the level to ensure their safety, but it couldn't be helped that Selesina didn't have any battle prowess. If she were to practice archery then could she be able to defeat weaker demons from far away. For now, she'll hold this thought and consult it with Hisu later. Anyway, this was the present condition of the village. They didn't sell honey, but Anton said that they made good income by selling potatoes. Next is to let the great tree grow well, and my left eye. There was also the thing about Miria, but it would be better to consult her father about this. Celestina couldn't selfishly decide on her own about the thing with Miria. But, a flower did bloom. How would her father react? He wanted her to stay in the mansion so would he dislike the fact that a flower had bloomed? Or would he give her words of encouragement? Celestina got out of the bath got dressed, and went to her father's study with Toy and Hisu, in order to report everything that had happened. She took in a deep breath, and knocked on the door. Bethel called out, come in. Excuse me. Cell. The moment she entered, he loosed his strict face and smiled instantly. Back quote ah? A good mood? She wondered why, but it became clear to her once she heard his next words. I wanted you to show me your white flower cell. I never imagined that the tree would bloom this quickly. He was so deeply moved that there were still tears in his eyes. He was incredibly happy that Celestina was able to get the great tree to bloom. He hugged Celestina with strokes her head. I'm really sorry that I told you strictly that it was impossible for you earlier. For Therno, you didn't abandon me, even though I had no blessings, but raised me so preciously. I'm really happy about that. It wouldn't be strange if he decided to abandon the child that didn't have any blessings. Celestina hugged him back and expressed her gratitude. Thank you. Once they had calmed down, they sat down on the sofa and Celestina started to report. Celestina was going to give him all the details, but since he told her that he also wanted to see the white flower, she smiled as she realized that he already knew about it all. She obviously told him about Miria and checked with him whether she should respond to her or leave it to Bethel to respond. You'll become the official lord of the 7th district hereafter, so I'll leave it to you hereafter, but I'll respond this time. Understood. Thank you, father. Earl Saltimel is an old friend of mine. He raised his son strictly, but he is weak to his daughter Miria. He listens to any selfish requests from her. This was definitely trouble. Bethel smiled. Especially because his wife died you know point well, but that doesn't excuse the fact that he lets her do whatever she wants though. Bethel wanted El Saltimal to put his foot down, so he promised to talk to him very soon. He would let me know the result later. Understood. However, Lady Miria would also be feeling very troubled. Ah, even so, we can't just leave it be right. Of course, I do understand that. There was still one important topic remaining. About your left eye cell. Right now it looks normal, but it was different when the flower on the great tree bloomed right. Yes. Lord Soratek said that we should visit the great shrine once. That's right. I always thought that you don't have any blessings, but maybe you're loved by some amazing god. That was certainly an exaggeration, but she couldn't say it. The phenomenon of the selection choices appearing before her was nothing short of amazing. Back quote I don't understand why that selection was available only then. There were lots of things that she wanted to know. 
She didn't know if the mystery would be solved by going to the Great Shrine, but maybe they could gain some understanding. I would also like to go with you, but I can't leave for a long period due to work. I'll have to have to leave it to his majesty Sora Tech. Yes. And then. He turned to Hisu who was waiting behind Bethel, and then to Toy who was sitting there like a good boy. Both of you, Celestina might face many things hereafter. Please continue to support her. Of course master. I'll do my best to be of help to Lady Cell. Hisu looked at Bethel directly, and said with determination. Toy extended his front foot out in a determined pose and a determined look on his face. Woof, haha, how reliable. Bethel stroked Toy, and told asked him to take care of Celestina. I'll leave it to you, Hisu, Toy. Celestina smiled with joy, and was powered up, to continue managing the village. The story up until this point is part of the first volume. Plus I'm writing a short story from each character my cute fan k slash Soratek the reason to give my best slash Hisu village without vegetation slash ant and this story uses the main web part, the villainous heroine observation slash Celestina wrapped in the gentleness of the earth slash Hisu revolutionary day slash Nicholas unprecedented blessings slash Soratek since this web. Version includes the books, please support us as well. A new volume starts from here so let me explain some things. Please do continue to enjoy the story. Some changes have been made due to the publication of the book, so we will match the book version from this volume. Second volume. The 7th district will be changed to the 2nd district. Celestina's eyes will be rose pink instead of baby pink. Thank you for your support. Marquis Rinklet of the Alvid Empire entrusted the second district, that had nothing in it, of his territory to his daughter. No, it's wrong to say, that there was nothing. Because there was a great tree growing in the center of the village and it even had a white flower blooming on it. Originally, 14 people living in the slums of the town, that is adjacent to the village, Harmel, moved to this place, and formed a village. These days they are full of joy. Hisu, today a branch of Picard is opening in the village. It's exciting isn't it Lady Cell? Yes, very much. Celestina Rinklet was the lord of the second district, where these people had gathered and formed a village. She was a Valenus, that had remembered the memories of her previous life in Japan. She had been reborn into the famous fantasy game for girls in Japan, called back quote the maiden of Asgeral. She had silvery white hair, that could attract people's eyes and lovely rose pink eyes, that you would want to protect. Her fianke was the crown prince of this country. She had received queen education ever, since she was a child. She was a perfect daughter. However, she had one infallible drawback. In this world, every person would gain blessings from either a spirit of God. If you didn't, it was as if you were disqualified, and you would be stigmatized by the public. Even her parents may have abandoned her point that's why Celestina didn't venture out much and spend most of her time at home. However, right now she was surprisingly surrounded with positivity. She was waiting for the day when her fianke, the crown prince Soratek would break their engagement as she decided to be independent enough to live on her own. Of course, there was a reason for that as well. The heroine of this fantasy game was currently rushing down the Soratek route. If the two of them achieve the happy ending then Celestina would be exiled. If the two reach the bad ending then Celestina would die. If she had to choose one then she would rather choose the happy end, so that she would only be exiled. That's why Celestina was hoping, that Sora Tech and the heroine would get together. Hisu put Celestina's used teacup on the tray, and told her, that he would now go to prepare. Celestina's apprentice butler, Hisu. He had amber colored hair and jade green eyes. He had a well balanced face and was pretty good looking you would probably think, that he was younger. He was the same age as Celestina, 
16 years old, but shorter than her. The reason for that was his living conditions until now. He is an orphan who used to live in a small hut with barely anything to eat. You need nutrition in order to grow. Since he became Celestina's butler, his living conditions and his nutrition improved. Therefore he had grown a little taller and his body had become stronger as well. Once Hisu left the room, Celestina called her maidena to help her change her clothes. Today they were going to sell in village. They would then stay at the house in Harmal after that, and visit the village. Backquote Yosh, today I'll do my best as the official lord, and not the acting lord. Celestina had become the official lord of the village and had named the village backquote Selin. There were 18 residents in the village including Hisu, but if you think that this belonged to a girl that wasn't blessed then it was pretty good already. The tree that was growing in the center of the village would grow, based on the blessings of the lord. The tree that Celestina planted had grown up to 1 meter in length and it also had a beautiful white flower proudly blooming on it with petals, layered like a dress. For Celestina it was obviously very important, but it was also very important to the villagers, something to be proud of. Lady Cell, we've reached the village. Thank you Hisu. There was a two story building close to the entrance of the village. It was open from today. A branch of the picket company. All the houses in this village were single storied so this one really stood out. They brought in a carpenter from town and urgently constructed it. It wasn't that big though. There is enough space for three employees and to place the goods. There were also two rooms prepared at the back to hold business meetings. The interior is simple with no gaudy decoration. The rooms on the second floor were for the employees to stay and work. It will become bigger and bigger hereafter. Celestina's heart swells at that thought. Celestina's mansion, although not grand enough to be called that, was still under construction. Since it was the house of the lord it had to be constructed with care, with a good foundation. The village carpenter Gats was in charge of Celestina's house. Since today was the opening of the store, all the villagers had gathered. There was no shop in the village to date, that's why they were all looking forward to it. From the small things available for purchase. They would select the items they would like. Once they noticed that Celestina had come, they all gathered around her. Good morning Lady Celestina. Miss Adet good morning. Are you out shopping? Yes. We received some money from the profits from selling the potato chips. All this time we've lived in slums so going shopping was always a dream. Adet was really happy as she smiled. Anton. The village chief came out from behind. He had a bottle of sake in his hand. He was probably drinking with gats. Lady Celestina, the branch store had opened, and it has become this lively. Yes. Everyone looks so happy, so I'm really happy as well. Since it was the opening day, Nicholas came out from the back once she had finished her greetings with Anton. He came out. Since he heard that Celestina had come. Welcome Lady Celestina and congratulations on becoming the official lord of this village. You're already aware? Information travels fast. What? Lady Celestina is the official lord? That's a very joyful thing. Let's have a feast at the village today. Congratulations Lady Celestina. Celestina shyly thanked him. Anton and the other villagers happily applauded her. Rio said that this isn't enough as he took Eric and Roger outside. The three of them were the male youth of the village. Grandpa Anton, we'll go and hunt for some good meat for the feast. Good meat is certainly important. We'll aim for the big ones. The three of them left the place after declaring that. The feast tonight seems to be fixed. She was very happy that the villagers were taking initiative for her. She was the happiest about the fact that she was recognized as a lord. Lady Cell is popular. Hisu, it's embarrassing so please don't say that. 
Celestina touched her red cheeks and looked down. She was happy, but she wasn't used to being the center of attention, or being congratulated like this. For now, Celestina moved on to the next topic. Mr. Anton. I'm planning to visit the Great Shrine. Not immediately, but I still haven't fixed a date. I won't be able to visit the village for some time then. Great Shrine. Understood. Even if you're absent, we'll run the village well. Yes. I'll leave it to you. She also asked about the ages of the children. Once children turn 6, they must be taken to the Great Shrine for the ceremony to receive blessings. That's right. I'll check it, and tell you later. Thank you. The Great Shrine was in the center of the world and each country had a small shrine. As a rule, the Lord had to be present during the ceremony that's why Celestina would be attending as well. Celestina had only been to the Great Shrine once when she had the blessing ceremony. Since she didn't have any blessings, she never wished to visit it again. But it was different now. Backquote I want to see the ceremony where the children will get their blessings. So exciting. Of course, she might also have blessings, so she was looking forward to going to the great shrine and confirm it. Of course, she was also concerned. Backquote well, she was already a villainous without blessings, so it couldn't get any worse. Celestina decided to feel at ease, since she was already at the bottom. In order to celebrate Celestina becoming the official lord of the village, the villagers took the initiative to prepare. Normally, they would be selling potato chips at the food stall in Harmel, but today they had taken a holiday and decided to celebrate. Selen village had a lot of ingredients to make food from the income that they received from selling potato chips. Additionally, the young men of the village had also hunted meat. Everyone loves Lady Cell. Hisu smiled and said as he mentioned that tonight's dinner would be very lively. Today the branch of Pickard had also opened here, so it was a day of celebration. Everyone seemed to be in a mood to have fun. Backquote NN. It's something to look forward to. Ah. How about we do a backquote barbeek today? Barbeek? Hisu inclined his head. A barbeque is a grilling of vegetables and meat on a net. It's something that everyone can enjoy together. There wasn't a big enough room to hold a banquet with everyone so a barbeque was perfect. Hisu nodded in understanding and said that they needed to start preparing in that case when. In that case, we will prepare the tools. Nicholas volunteered. Is that alright? Backquote of course. Leave it to me, I have a good net. Nicholas confidently went to the back to prepare, and Hisu and Celestina were left with nothing to do. Anton had gone to confirm the birth dates of the children so right now only Hisu and Celestina were here. The other villagers were making preparations. They had politely asked to leave the preparations to them, since it was a celebratory party for Celestina. Let's go to the great tree, and give it some water. Yes. I'll prepare the watering can. Thank you. They pulled some water from the well for the watering can, and went to the great tree. The great tree was about 1 meter in height with several leaves, and one white flower. The trunk was thin, and it looked like it would break easily, but the fields around the great tree were shining brightly as if to share vitality with the great tree. This was the result of the skills and the privilege of Celestina who could use the Asgeral system. The great tree was a tree that the lord of the land would grow, and it would protect the land. If it grew healthy and robust then it would protect the land, but if it were to wither, because of some reassent then a disaster would befall the land. It was very important for the lord as well as the people living in the land. Thank God, the flower is blooming really well. Lady Cell's flower seems to always welcome us kindly, woof. When Celestina looked at the great tree with relief, Hisu said that without embarrassment. 
Conversely, she was the one that ended up feeling shy instead. Back quote it'll be great if the skill level increases before I leave for the great shrine this world was the world of a fantasy game back quote maiden of Asgeral. It had a territory management system that Celestina used since she had played it in her past life. You could use that to increase the level of the great tree and acquire skills. There was a skill that Celestina wanted to level up. That was back quote blessings of the amulet. It was at level 1 right now which meant that monsters wouldn't come within 1 kilometer of the great tree. It could go up to level 3 and the radius would increase to 3 kilometers and 5 kilometers respectively. It was an amazing skill, but difficult to level up. You needed to defeat 100 monsters in order to reach level 2 and 1000 monsters in order to reach level 3. For a sheltered girl like Zelesina, it was a difficult task. Picken. Fertility protection had reached level 4. Lady Cell. Ah, it's nothing. Let's water the great tree. Yes. The voice had echoed inside her head, but she immediately made a poker face and smiled. Honestly speaking, she wanted to check the system immediately, but Hisu was here right now so she couldn't. It's something to look forward to for later she told herself. Please grow up healthy. Celestina said as she watered the great tree. New leaves sprouted on the tree. Ah, the leaves have increased Lady Cell. You are, I'm really happy. Back quote it's definitely, because the fertility protection level went up. The great tree would grow when the owner, Celestina would water it. When new skills were acquired if the conditions were fulfilled then its level would rise. If you were to water it after that then it would show a big change like the one just now. As expected, another flower didn't bloom but this was already something to be joyful about. The condition for the fertility protection to reach level 4 was to harvest 10,000 crops. She thought that I would be quite difficult, but it was surprisingly easy. Besides, due to the blessings of the great tree, the speed of growth of crops had increased. Moreover, Cell and Village harvested potatoes so several of them could be harvested at once. When she looked closely, she noticed that the children were harvesting potatoes for today's barbecue. Perhaps one of them had harvested the 10,000th potato. Back quote next, I want the level of the great tree to increase right now it was at level 5. The condition for it to reach level 7 was to back quote open your own store which was already achieved. But, the condition for it to reach level 6 is to back quote build your own house. Back quote once my house is ready, it will immediately reach level 7 right however, regretfully it was still under construction. It had to be made properly, so it couldn't be rushed. She knew that some part of it was done, but she had no choice but to wait for it patiently right now. Woof woof, Toy was barking and focusing on something as Hisu laughed. Lady Cell, Toy and hungry, and seems to want to eat some potatoes. Can I give some to him? Of course. Eat a lot, Toy, woof, Hisu went with Toy to the potatoes. So Celestina was the only one left at the great tree. She started the Asgeral system. Asgeral system. Start up. Celestina Inclet great tree owned. Level 5 guardian beast. Toy territory owned. Albert kingdom. Rinklet territory district 7 people. 18 great tree skill up. Fertility blessings level 4. Vegetation grows well in a 5 km radius around the great tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, level 2, the great tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Blessings of the Amulet level 1, no monsters come within 1 km of the great tree. Territory named, yield increases specialty of the village, the recognition of the village increases she groaned that she didn't have enough skills, yet when she checked the system. Let's list the skills that can be acquired before going to the great shrine. Of course, there are some things 
that Celestina has to do but some of them have to be done as a village unit. For example, harvesting and constructing buildings. It looks like today would be a busy day, but, it looks like it would be fun so there was nothing to do. Lady Celestina, the preparations for the barbecue are done. Celestina was admiring the great tree, and passing her time when Anton rushed to her out of breath. He seemed to have wanted to inform her as quickly as possible. There is no need to rush Mr. Anton. Thank you. I also checked the birth dates of the children really? Please let me know. Since Celestina had requested it, he had checked it up immediately. Anton nodded and started to tell her about the children. There are three children in this village, that haven't had a ceremony for receiving blessings. Giselle is five, and was born in the month of autumn. Five-year-old Morris was born in the month of spring and four-year-old Nana was born in the month of wind. The other children are already over six years of age, so they've already received their blessings. The calendar of this world is different from Japan. The months in this world are... Month of spring, month of water, month of summer, month of fire, month of autumn, month of wind, month of winter, month of earth, it's an 8 month cycle. It is long said, that the spirit of water makes water for spring, the spirit of fire helps the crops grow with their flames, the spirit of wind heals those at work and the spirit of earth sleeps with the earth. Each month has 40 days. It's easy to understand, if we think, that each pair of months has its own season. Today is the 10th day of the month of fire back quote isn't the month of autumn next month. She was taken aback by Anton's words and quickly called Hisu, in order to check the schedule of the ceremonies. Toy came along as well, while wagging his tail and eating potatoes. What happened Lady Cell? One child in this village, has her birthday next month. We'll go to the shrine on the day of the ceremony of blessings so can you please check my schedule? Understood, I'll check the schedule. Back quote thank you. The month of fire had just begun, so Giselle's ceremony shouldn't have any issue. Celestina places her hand on her chest in relief and turns to Anton. Since it's about the children from this village, I was thinking of have you come along as well point is that okay? Of course. I'm looking forward to seeing what blessings Giselle receives. Anton nodded happily, and said that he wanted to do his best as the village chief. They went to the center of the village to find that the preparations for the barbecue were complete. There were potatoes that were just harvested by the children, vegetables that were bought from the town of Harmel, and a freshly hunted boar. Back quote everyone works fast. Seeing the lively and fun preparations, Celestina also joined the circle that was preparing the barbeque and asked if she could help with something. However, everyone started to panic a little since they didn't want to make the law do work. Lady Celestina, please sit down and wait for a little while. It's alright, I want to get closer to all of you. Adet who was preparing to grill was confused. But she smiled immediately at Celestina who picked up the skewer with meat and vegetables on it. Lady Celestina is a strange person. Is that so? A noble lady wouldn't usually do something like this right. Even working in the field, I guess it's something that Lady Celestina would do. Celestina smiled as she felt that she might have broken the ice a little more between her and Adet. I'm really enjoying myself right now. This is also thanks to you, and the other villagers, Miss Adet. That's point not something we deserve. Celestina and Adet continued to talk and grill meat. Gats's voice rang out through the village as he called out, Did you get the sake? The barbecue had begun. Adet prepared the cups and Celestina asked her what to drink. There are three drinks. Ale, juice, and wine. Which one would you like? Thank you. I'll have some juice. Yes. The moment Celestina took the cup in her hand, Hisu immediately came next to her. 
He was holding a cup with juice, just like Celestina. Celestina knew that they were toast together, but her hand was taken as Jesus said, Let's go. A. Hey. What are you thinking Lady Cell? It's a toast. I'm doing it. Celestina thought that Gats would do that with the flow, but she slightly panicked, since she hadn't expected this. She wanted a little time to think about it but everyone was already holding their drinks, so that wasn't possible. Celestina was brought to the front and she went to stand next to Gats. Today was a celebration for her becoming the official lord, so she had to express her appreciation properly. All the villagers stood in front of her with their eyes shining as they looked at her. She was really so happy that she almost teared up. Backquote will I be able to do well as a lord point from here on. Her little anxiety was quickly blown away. She was going to do her best in order to protect the people in this village. I'm very happy to have a barbeek like this today, even though it was so sudden. The young men of the village had hunted for meat, the children had harvested the potatoes and the vegetables had been bought with the income of the village. This was proof that all of them, obviously including Celestina had done their best. I'm very proud to be the lord of this village of the second district. Thank you for doing your best. Please support me hereafter as well. Cheers. Cheers. The villagers cheered loudly, raised their cups, and gave their congratulations to Celestina. Lady Celestina, congratulations on becoming the lord. There is a lot of meat so please eat a lot. They skewered the meat with a smile as Celestina took it, after expressing her gratitude. We use the money from the food stalls, to buy the tools to hunt. This village has become much easier to live in. Rio told her happily. He told her that he patrols the village to confirm its safety, and does heavy work. Anton came in on the conversation, and praised the men saying, that they were all doing their best. Moreover, the food had become delicious recently. The variety has also increased and it's lively. Odette and the others are also doing their best, and using various ingredients. I must also do my best and hunt some meat I guess. Celestina smiled at their conversation. Mr. Rio, it's dangerous if you make a mistake while hunting so please be careful. Of course. Thank you Lady Celestina. Due to the great tree's skill, monsters wouldn't come within a certain radius, but it was better to be careful. She would hate it if someone were to get injured. Backquote it isn't just a peaceful world, so we must be careful. She wanted the people within her reach to live in peace and happiness at least. Now, this is over. Lady Celestina please eat a lot. Yes, thank you, Mr. Rio. After seeing Rio off, Celestina bit into her skewer. It might have been the first time that she had eaten like this since she was born into this world. As the daughter of Marquis, she had severely disciplined manners. But eating like this outside was fun, and it gave her a sense of liberation. NN. Delicious. Even though it was boar meat, it had almost no odor, and was carefully prepared. The juices from the meat spread into her mouth as she chewing with satisfaction. Lady Cell, I brought some vegetables. Thank you Hisu. Let's eat together, of course, toy as well. Yes, woof, the potatoes that Hisu brought were really sweet and soothing. It was so delicious with just grilling and adding salt. Backquote crops grown with hard work are really delicious, right? Humans feel the happiest when they are eating. Celestina relaxed. Once Celestina and Hisu reached the house in Harmel, they quickly decided to check the schedule hereafter and coordinate it. While drinking the tea that Hisu poured for her she was thinking about what to do. The only one that is ready for the ceremony of blessings from the village of Selen is little Jisel. Mr. Anton and I will certainly go with her the question was, should the go to the great shrine of the smaller shrine in the kingdom? 
Once the children turn 6 years of age in this world, they go to the shrine, to find out their blessings. They can also find out their aptitude this way. The seal of blessings appears somewhere on the person's body, Celestina didn't have one. Backquote but, it looks like I might have one after all. She wanted to go to the great shrine and figure out whether she had blessings or not. In that case, it will be fine to take Gisela along and have her ceremony at the great shrine. It didn't really matter where she had her ceremony since the results wouldn't change. The ceremony for blessings is held on the last day of every month we also have some work there. Should we go to the great shrine with Mr. Anton and Gisel? The two of them can return first, when the ceremony is over. That's right. If it's not an issue then I'll send the documents to the great shrine. I'll ask Mr. Hanley to guide me, so it should be alright. Then I'll leave it to you. Let's tell Gisel and Mr. Anton tomorrow. Yes. Since the conversation about the ceremony was completed smoothly she went on to the next topic in order to raise her skill level. Hisathir is another very important thing that I want to discuss with you. Lady Cell. She grabbed his hand tightly and looked at him. He was also affected by her serious expression. I want to defeat monsters. Point yes. Hisu's eyes went wide since he didn't expect that. After a few moments of silence, he held his head. Lady Cell, are you serious? His eyes were telling her that it was better to stop here, since he didn't want to tell her something bad. A mature lady like her was going to defeat demons with those slender arms? If you were to ask a hundred people, perhaps all of them would say that it was impossible. He suicided and looked at Celestina. You have a reason right. I don't believe that you would say something like that without a good reason. As expected, it wouldn't work if she didn't give him a reason. She smiled. The fact that she needed to do that in order to raise the skill level of backquote blessings of the amulet and things about the game she obviously couldn't tell him. Backquote more so a fantasy game, how should she explain it to him? There are two reasons. Celestina raised her fingers and started with the first explanation. I haven't left the mansion often before this, but nowadays I'm out most of the time. I move around freely inside the village that I wanted to be able to have the means of defeating monsters as a means of self-defense. That certainly does make sense. If I were to protect you without fail it would be fine, but I'm still inexperienced. For now, I was only moving around in fathers in my territory, but if I had to go far, or go to someone else's territory then I would need an escort. Hisu heard Celestina, and scolded himself, that he needed to properly think about security. What is the other reason? The second one is for the great tree in the village. A. I can't explain it too well. But if I can defeat monsters as the lord of the land then the great tree will feel relieved. As expected, he wouldn't get convinced with this. Celestina thought as she explained the reason to him without really lying. The great tree will be relieved. He was slightly surprised, but he nodded that he understood. Is it fine? Do you want me to say that it's not? No, that's not what I mean. I'm very happy. Ha. Huh. Celestina hurriedly shook her head as Isu smiled and gave up. I don't understand much about the great tree, so I can only trust you Lady Cell. Isu. A beautiful white flower bloomed on Lady Cell's great tree. If it were to grow further then how much more beautiful would it become? Isu smiled cheerfully as he looked forward to it. The next day, Celestina went to the weapon store with Isu and Toy. They were first going to find a weapon that she could handle. Welcome. The owner of the weapon store made a perplexed expression. Perhaps he thought that we mistook the store. He was just about to say that. Celestina smiled and looked around. Longswords, 
short swords, there were various kinds of swords, there were also some bows and hammers. Good day. I want a weapon that I can handle. UMM, for you lady? Yes and for him as well. Selesina nodded and explained to him that they were also looking for a weapon for Hisu. There weren't many weapons that a lady like Selesina could handle. She couldn't swing a sword around with one hand and something big would be too heavy for her. When the shop owner started to look around Hisu gave a supplementary explanation. Excuse me, please give weapons that a rear guard would use. Backquote AHH, that's right. In that cassette bow, throwing knife or a spirit ball would be good. He chose three for Celestina, a bow that was light but wouldn't launch for long distances, a small knife that you could throw at the enemy, a ball used for attack that was infused with the power of the spirits. Backquote spirit ball point it was an iron plate item in the game, but I never thought that I would be able to use it after being reborn here. I don't have the confidence to throw knives, so I guess I'll go for the bow or the spirit ball. Celestina took them both in her hands. The bow was relatively light, but she would end up exhausted till she could get used to it. Even after several hours of practice, it might be difficult to use. The spirit ball was an item unique to this world. It was so rare that it's a good price for a disposable item. It had a tremendous effect. If you throw it at the enemy you can attack with the power of each attribute 